Good morning and welcome to our Palm Sunday service. Uh, we're glad that you're joining us wherever you are. If you're part of Community of Joy or have found us in another way, uh, we hope that you experience God's presence through this service. Uh, this service about having palms. And I don't know, some of you might have cut out some palms. Some of you might have uh, picked them up from the church. Some of you may not have palms. So you can wave your hands as we sing uh, the opening song. But as we're doing these worship services, we are inviting you to light a candle. So I will light our candle here. And we'll take a deep breath to welcome in God's Spirit. And then please join me if you have your worship guide uh, with our call to worship. We'll share in responsibly. Let us enter the city of God today and sing hosannas to our King. Let us turn our backs on the powers that grasp and control and open our hearts to the Son of God riding on a donkey. Let us join in his parade, surrounded by outcasts and the poor, the blind and the leper. Let us follow the one who brought freedom and peace and walk in solidarity with the abandoned and oppressed. Let us shout for joy at Christ's coming and join his disciples, welcoming the broken, healing the sick, dining with outcasts. Let us touch and see as God draws near, riding in triumph towards the cross. Amen. Amen. Oh, glory, Lord, and honor to you, Redeemer King, to whom the lips of children made sweet hosannas ring. The company of angels are praising you on high, creation. approach our God of grace in the spirit of honesty and humility and confess our sins to God and one another. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, we confess, confess that, that we are, are not so different from, from those who welcomed Christ, Christ into Jerusalem, Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, Sunday yet yeah, later yeah, shouted yeah, crucify him or remain silent in the face of injustice. Of injustice. We, we have also betrayed, betrayed you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, by our sins both secret and known, and known. Yet, yet you, you died, died for people like us. us. And you rose on the third day that we might be redeemed. For the sake of Jesus Christ, do not hold our sins against us. People of God, hear these words of forgiveness. In Christ, God hears, God answers, and God sets us free. In Christ, you are forgiven. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. Okay. Psalm 118, verses 20 through 28. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. 
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Find the festal procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. The reading is from Mark, verse 11, verses 1 through 10. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethany and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, The Lord needs it, and they will and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside the street. As they were untying it, some bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their clothes on it, their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Can you remember the last big outing you were able to go on maybe a few weeks ago uh, where you were able to travel freely, socialize freely, and generally live your life without having to worry uh, with major concerns about coronavirus? For me, it was something called the Black and Yellow Bash, which was this get-together uh, put on by our local soccer team, New Mexico United, to celebrate what was going to be the start of the new season. And uh, there was loud music at this venue. There was chanting from the fans. There was just this general feeling of anticipation and excitement for what we all expected to happen. And we did not anticipate at that point the next chapter that was soon to come. You know, this kind of scenario reminds me a bit of the story of Palm Sunday, when Jesus' followers lined the streets of Jerusalem to celebrate what they expected to be Jesus' triumphant victory over the powers of the world, the coming of the Messiah, and they waved their palm branches and they chanted, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And one get the, gets the feeling that they too had no sense of the the next chapter that was to come with the crucifixion on Good Friday. Well, as human beings, we tend to tell ourselves that whatever is the reality now is going to be the reality forever, or at least that's what we tend to feel in our hearts. On Palm Sunday, you know, everyone felt good, and it probably felt like things were going to be good and be, good, be on the up forever. And then on Good Friday, Everything had fallen apart and all their expectations had failed them and it probably felt like the end of the world. And nobody, nobody at all, I think, had predicted Easter, save Jesus himself. Well, you know, this is actually the normal pattern in life and in the spiritual journey. Uh, these three stages of life are actually really common. We could call them the orientation stage, the disorientation stage, and the reorientation stage. Or if we wanted to use spiritual language, we could talk about life, death, and new life. And I would like to go through each of these stages with you. Uh, some teachers talk about these things, and they could be helpful uh, in the scenario we find ourselves in now to think about how these are normal stages of life and what each of these stages have to teach us. So like I said, the first, the first stage is orientation, and this stage is really the life stage, uh, the, the starting point in life. And in this stage in our lives, in our, in our spiritual lives, this is when we are asking and answering questions such as, who are my family and friends in, in my life who I can trust? Who is the God that I believe in and trust in? What are my morals that I'm going to try to live by? What is my plan for my life that I'm going to prepare for and expect, and what is going to happen in my version of the future. 
And you know, this is a really good and necessary stage to start with. Uh, this is usually the stage that we're working through as we're young people, uh, even into our adolescence and young adulthood. This is the stage we're in, in answering all of these questions. And this is, a, like I said, a good stage because everyone needs to lay a foundation in their lives. And this is our foundation that we lay, uh, our basic boundaries of who we are that will serve us well in the rest of our life. However, even though this is a great stage to begin, even though it makes a great foundation, it's not a great stage to spend our whole lives in. And why is this? Well, for one thing, it tends to be kind of a black and white thinking stage, right? So in this stage, often we divide the world into good people and bad people. We don't really see the, the nuance, the gray in people. Uh, we often divide the world into us groups and them groups, right? And it's a very us versus them mentality. It also tends to be pretty simplistic, right? In this mindset, we often have the idea that good things happen to good people and bad things happen to bad people. And, uh, you know, we live our lives kind of expecting this to be the case. And then lastly, it's, it's not a sufficient stage for our whole lives because it tends to be pretty egocentric. My life plan, it's what's going to happen. My version of God is the version of God that's real. My version of experience and morality is the only one that has any weight, the only one that really matters. And so we, when we're in this orientation stage, this is kind of the world we're in. And it's the first chapter of life. But like with all these stages, it seems at that time like it's the only chapter, right? Things seem usually pretty good and orderly. And, you know, we're kind of in our life shouting Hosanna. We have expectation. And we can't imagine that anything is going to break down our nice, orderly, safe reality. But then for whatever reason, maybe it's one event, maybe it's a series event, we enter into a different reality, which is the disorientation stage. And the disorientation stage is when the things we built our life around in the prior stage start to fall apart. And spiritually speaking, this is the stage that corresponds with death and the cross. And it's full of negative events and challenging truths that we just didn't see coming. Maybe you start to notice in your life that sometimes bad things happen to really good people and sometimes good fortune seems to follow people who aren't that great, which doesn't really add up to our previous understanding of life. Or maybe the life plan that we had prepared for ourselves, the life plan that we had expected to happen doesn't work out the way we expected. You know, we don't get the job we wanted or a major relationship falls apart or an illness uh, strikes us or a loved one dies. And maybe a lot of the sacred cows that we had set up in our mindset, in our worldview before, show their inadequacy. Maybe you start to realize that as much as you love your parents, they're not perfect, right? And you have to think for yourself and sometimes question them. Uh, maybe you start to see the flaws in your church or your personal theology. God isn't who you expected God to be. Or maybe you go to a science class in college and suddenly the, the worldview you were given about like the creation story starts to fall apart when you see like the fossil record. And all this stuff starts to make you question who God is. And you'd always assume that God was fair and loving and easy to understand, but suddenly events in life make it harder for you to believe in the simple way that you used to. And so in this stage, we come to a place, like I said, of disorientation, which is kind of this paradoxical experience where bad things happen, but they're paradoxically also good things. They're bad because they involve pain and loss, and I don't want to gloss over how those are hard experiences, but they're also good in that they bring about disillusionment. And we often talk about this word as a bad word, right? Disillusionment as a negative thing. But actually, if you think about what it means, it's a positive thing. There's this author I think I've mentioned before named Barbara Brown Taylor who writes this about disillusionment. She says, disillusionment is the loss of illusion about ourselves, about our world, about God. And while it is almost always painful, it is not a bad thing to lose the lies we have mistaken for truth. Disillusioned, we come to understand that God does not always conform to our expectations. We glimpse our own relative size in the universe and see that no human being can say who God should be or how God should act. 
We review our requirements of God and recognize them as our own fictions, our own frail shelters against the vast night sky. Disillusioned, we find out what is not true and are set free to seek what is true, if we dare. Well, I think this is a great quote. Uh, and it, it speaks to the positive aspect of disillusionment. But you know, when you're caught up in disillusionment and disorientation, like the stage before, it seems like you're never going to get out of it. It feels like you're on the cross and you're going to be on the cross forever. It feels like everything that's fallen apart is leading you to a world where nothing good is ever going to come again. But you know, actually the disorientation stage is what prepares us for new life. It's like when you're in your late teens or early 20s and you're living with your parents and over time you get annoyed with it and dissatisfied with it and you grate at each other. And you know, actually it's good that it's a dissatisfying experience or you'd maybe never leave home, right? And become your own person. And so disorientation is what pulls us out of our immaturity and eventually pushes us towards maturity in life and spirituality. And that leads us to the final stage, which is reorientation, which we might call the resurrection stage or the new life stage. And this stage is not the same as the naive faith of the first stage, but it's also not beholden to the negativity and the pessimism of the second stage. It's not just life, but it's new life. It's, it's life with a twist. It's not about worshiping a God who you can always explain. It's, it's finding a God who goes beyond explanations. It's about following a God who leads us into a future that we can't always control or predict. It's about giving ourselves to a movement, to a God, to a spirit that's actually bigger than ourselves. And actually the picture of salvation is even bigger than, than just me and God together. It's a love that we trust that we will discover when we die, but it's also a love that's breaking into our world right now if we have the courage in the eyes of faith to see it and to seek it. And all of us have seen glimpses of this new life, but none of us have seen it completely. Uh, but we can be a part of bringing it to this world now when we bring kindness and love and hope to our neighbor. You know, thinking about recent events of new life, I think about people in our church sending caring cards to those people who are living in isolation in nursing homes right now. I think about a member who offered to donate if we had a good Samaritan fund in case anyone in our church is struggling to survive right now, just saying, I want to be able to, to help uh, however I can with anyone who might be struggling. It's about how we stay home right now as much as we can, not just for ourselves, but for the sake of our neighbor to keep them safe. And above all, it's a faith that we share that says, whatever happens in this crazy time, we know that there's hope in Jesus. And so if you're caught in the middle chapter right now, where fear reigns supreme, or even if you're journey, journeying in the first chapter where everything seems orderly and easy answers seem like they're enough, don't forget the last chapter. Don't forget that God is bigger than our problems and even bigger than our answers. And don't forget that wherever you are, Easter is coming.
Jesus, our King, we thank you for your faithfulness to us, which led you to Jerusalem as a king on a donkey, even though you knew you would soon exit this world as a criminal on a cross. Open your hearts to love and mo you more deeply for your sacrificial love for us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Humble Jesus, you did not behave like a normal king and gravitate towards wealth and power, but rather you loved the unloved and lifted the downtrodden. In this time of great need, help us also to be friends of those who yearn to belong and helpers of those who struggle to survive. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, like with your journey towards the cross, many of us also look ahead towards a future which fills us with uncertainty and anxiety. Bring peace to those who fear for themselves or loved ones. Grant support for those who face job losses and economic challenges. Strengthen us all with the assurance that you are with us in every moment we face. Lord, in your mercy. Hear, Hear our prayer. Finally, God, we pray for our life together at Community of Joy, that we might continue to be your church and support what is happening through this ministry. Help this time of physical separation to also be a time of spiritual renewal, and open our hearts that we might be inspired to reach out and offer our love and support to each other throughout this time of hardship. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Your thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for this Palm Sunday worship service, and I invite you as we close this worship to join me in this prayer. O oh God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, by paths as yet untrodden, through perils unknown. 
Give us faith to continue becoming your church in new ways, not yet knowing what that might look like, but trusting that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And also receive a blessing. May our Lord Jesus Christ bless you with a Palm Sunday faith that you might experience the coming of our Lord and take hope with you this day and always. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day.